Hi, and welcome back to the Aruba CX Quick Start Series videos. Today I'm going to be providing video six, which is going to dive a little bit more deeper into the 8320 and the 8320 CX Switch Series. So just as a refresher from the first video, the 8320 and the 8325 Switch Series are our data center top of rack switches as well as campus aggregation switches. In fact, the switch series on the left, the 8325 switch series, this is the 25 gig and 100 gig switch series. This is also seen in spine environments and data centers also because we have the 32 port 100 gig model. Uh, the switches on the left support uh, features uh, for more demanding data center environments. For example, EVPN and VXLAN. It supports DCB. Like I said, the 25 gig and 100 gig. And this one has both front to back and back to front airflow options. Uh, when we compare that to the 8320 switch series, this is our one gig slash 40 gig switch series, which is still a very common switch series and data centers. Lots of servers are still connected via 10 gig as well as base T. And again, this is heavily used in the campus aggregation layer also. You can see it still supports IPv4 and IPv6 routing, OSPF, BGP, with up to 2.5 terabits of switching capacity. Now this switch comes with a front to back airflow. Now let's go ahead and go a little bit more into these switches. The first thing I wanted to share with everyone is the luggage tags on these switches. So this may seem trivial, but after spending a lot of uh, many years in this industry working for many other vendor switches that don't have luggage tags, there are many times throughout the year where something like this can actually cause you a big headache. So this is a, a, a very cool thing. Uh, this is the 8320 switch series. We could see on the 48 port models, the luggage tag is located on the left front side. And on the other model, the, switch, the luggage tag is located on the far right side. And of course, the luggage tag gives us, you know, the simple information that we need sometimes. Serial number, MAC address, product number, and part number. Now the 8325 switch series has both front to back and back to front airflow models. So that's why you see two SKUs over here on the right. So we have the 48 port model and the 32 port model. And of course the luggage tag is as shown here located on the far right. And again, it shows the serial number, the MAC address, the part number, as well as the model number. So let's go into the fan tray. So the 8320 fan tray supports one fan tray SKU that's JL481A. This is a front to back hot swappable fan tray. However, when you order an 8320 switch, the switch itself, the SKU you ordered for the switch itself is gonna come with these five hot swappable fan trays already installed. Now this switch will operate normally with five fan trays and if a fan tray does fail, we should replace that as soon as possible. Uh, we'll notice on the right, the red handle here actually indicates a front to back cooling airflow. So the hot air is going through the fan and going out towards the handle. And of course, on the right, we can see the LED, of course, the pole handle I just mentioned, the thumb screw, as well as the serial number, which is kind of on the top of the fan tray. And on the back here, we can see the connector, how it connects into the back of the switch. Now the 8325 is very similar, except it uses different fan trays. This switch series uses both, has both front to back and back to front fan tray options. We can see the SKUs for those individual fan trays on the lower left here. However, just like with the 8320, when you order an 8325, you're gonna choose front to back or back to front. And that switch is going, that single SKU for that switch is gonna come with these six fan trays already installed. These are hot swappable and field replaceable. And of course, the switch can tolerate failure of a single fan assembly while you know, still maintaining safe operation. Of course, we want to replace that fan as soon as possible if that does happen. It's, it's important to note that the fans for both the 48 port model and the 32 port model are not intercompatible and vice versa. Also notice, of course, the red handles indicating the front to back airflow I mentioned on the previous slide. The new thing we have over here are the blue handles. So these are the back to front airflow. So cold air is coming in the back of the switch, coming in the back of the fan, and then bl blowing through the switch. Now looking at power supplies, the 8320 switch series supports a single power supply. That's JL480A. It's a 400 watt AC power supply. However, just like with the fan tray, when you order the SKU for the switch, the switch is actually going to come with two of these hot swappable field replaceable fan trays already installed. Now the switch can operate normally on a single fan tray. So this is an N plus one solution. 
And of course, the power cord that you're going to get, of course, would be country specific. We can see on the lower left uh, some common uh, jumper cable and power connectors uh, using C15 to C14 type, type connections. Now, the 8325 power supply, again, this is the switch series that has both back to front and front to back. So this switch series actually supports two different fan tray, uh, power supplies. The first one is JL632A. This is the front to back power supply. And this is indicated by the red latch, just like the fan trays. And then the other one is the JL633A, and this is the back to front power supply. And again, this one is indicated by the blue latch. But just like with the 8320, when you order the CX8325 switch, that SKU you use for that switch is gonna ensure that that switch comes with two hot swappable field replaceable power supplies already installed. And again, we see some jumper cable options that are available for these switches, for these power supplies on the lower left. So when we're racking the CX8320 switch series, there are two rack kits available. There's a two post rack kit and a four post rack kit. The two post is a middle mount racking kit. So it comes with the middle mount mounting brackets as well as the screws to mount those to the switch and to mount those to the, to the rack. Now, of course, this must only be mid mounted and this, act, this rack kit is included with the 8320 switch. It's important to note the 8325 does not include a rack kit, so those must be ordered separately. And of course, the four post rack kit comes with the front post back brackets as well as the rear brackets with those adjustable ears, the screws to mount these, as well as the rear bracket locking screws to lock these adjustable ears into place. Here we can see the middle mount brackets being mounted to the switch. And then that switch using those middle mount brackets being mounted to the rack. And on the four post, we can see the brackets being mounted to the switch. We can see the front being mounted to the rack. And then if we take a look at the back, we can see the adjustable ears and how those are screwed and locked into the rack also. Now, when we're working in data center environments, commonly we're using 10 gig SFP plus or even 25 SFB 28 interfaces nowadays. However, we're always gonna have solution situations where we're gonna need at least a handful of one gig or 10 gig RJ45 interfaces. So it's important to note that these switches support those types of transceivers. And we here at Aruba have the Aruba one gig RJ45 transceiver, that's J8177D. And then we have the Aruba 10 gig, which is JL563A. Now the one gig transceiver, when we're using that in an 8320 switch, that's supported in all 48 ports. So that switch will max out at 48 of those. The 8325 48 port switch, the one gig transceiver is supported in all of the top row ports and the middle row ports. So that means it's gonna max out at 32. So if you were to try to install one of these transceivers into one of these bottom row ports, this is when we're gonna get one of those unsupported transceiver messages. And then for the 10 gig base T transceiver, when we're using it in the 8320 and 8325 switch, it's supported in the top row ports one through 16 and middle row ports two through 17. So as we can see here in the image, that means that we're gonna max out at 12 total ports. And again, if we try to install it in another port, that's when we're gonna get one of those unsupported transceiver messages. Another interesting thing about the CX8325, this is the 25 gig switch. So these are 48 ports of 25 gig interfaces here, as well as the 100 gig on the right. These 25 gig interfaces are actually organized into four groups of 12 ports each. These are called interface groups. And the default interface group speed setting for all of these ports is 25 gig. But if we did want to use 10 gig or one gig in one of these ports, we would need to modify the speed settings for that interface group. And of course, when we do that, that would affect all of the ports within that interface group. Another thing I wanted to mention is the reset button on this switch. So we don't have a button on the switch that's going to actually like reset your configuration or, or reset your running configs. But we do have the reset button, which performs the equivalent of a software initiated reboot. So you hold it down for five seconds and it'll basically do a re warm reboot of the switch. So this can be handy in, in, a, in those situations where you just can't get to the power supplies to do a, a, a true power cycle or a, or a cold boot. For password recovery though, or you know, resetting the switch to factory defaults, um, 
refer to the service OS guide, uh, as well as some future quick series videos. Another thing I wanted to mention are the USB ports on the 8320 and 8325 switch series. So these, these switches have both USB type A ports, which are used for managing the switch using our CX mobile app. So this is a Bluetooth dongle that actually comes with the switch and we can install it into this USB port. And then you can use an app on your phone or tablet to actually provide an initial configuration of the switch and get it onto the network really quick and easily. Of course, with the USB type A ports, we can also transfer software images into the switches, of course. But some of the switches actually have USB type B micro, micro B ports also, which are capable of acting as a serial port too. Now these of course would require a, an adapter and they do only support the FAT32 file system. Now when we're looking at command line interface, so now I've, I'm understand my switch, I've got it racked. Uh, now I wanna log into it and take access to it. It's important to note how we can access it. Obviously once the switch is online, we can have out of band management access using the RJ45 out of band port into a dedicated out of band network. That port supports 10, 100, or 1,000 megabytes, and it's actually all by default linked to the management VRF. However, we can also access it using you know, the serial console port, which it's important to note the baud rate is actually statically set to 115200. And of course, that requires a serial console cable. But we also have that USB micro B, which is able to provide CLI access to this switch. Now it's important to note also the baud rate for that is also statically set to 115200. And users typically need to download and install a standard USB driver for this. So that was an update for the 8320 and 8325 switch series. Please stay tuned to the AOS CX Quick Start series for more additional videos about our products, as well as additional videos about operating and running our products and getting them configured. Thank you. Thank you.